Welcome to another episode of KUSI's Mark My Words, hosted by our very own Mark Mathis. Time now for another edition of KUSI's Mark My Words, the fastest growing podcast in America. Our guest today, who has almost gotten a spar several times <laughs> from the FCC. Thank God we're not on any FCC licensing. Are there restrictions today? There are no restrictions today. Oh, you can say whatever you want. Uh, the ever so popular, uh, incredibly famous uh, Ian Lincoln. Lenikin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that cracks me up. <laughs> Lenikin? Lenikin. Yeah, it's an American name. It shows up here in the States, actually. Does it? Yeah, first time back in the, uh, the old days. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't either uh, until my grandmother was a genealogist many, many years ago. Genealogist? Genealogist. Genealogist. Yeah, what is a genealogist? She uh, studies genes, the genes in our bodies, our, our, our lineage. It's not like a genie? No, 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 no. Uh, anywho, yeah, there's a, in Maine, there's a, a bay, a town, and an island named after my family. Really? So anyone who a has... A bay, a town? In an island. There's Linnacan Bay Resort, actually, which is supposed Where to be... Where is this? In Maine. In Maine? Yeah, we have a lot of history Why here. do you live here? Uh, military. Yeah. Are you yeah. going to sit back the whole time if you are? Oh, scoot no. up a little bit that way. Because um, why do you live here? Military. My uh, grandparents, grandfathers, both of them were... Uh, one was Navy and one was Marines. For those of you who don't know, uh, Ian is uh, with McGregor's uh, Bar and Grill. Uh, he and I have become friends over the years, and I thought of no one better to speak about the uh, latest law that was passed. I think it became mandatory July the 1st. Yeah, July the 1st. We have till the 31st to be compliant. Um, the 31st to be compliant? Uh, August 31st, excuse me, August 31st. You have 60 days. Yes, yes. To be compliant with this law. Yes. Now. Is this for all new hires or existing hires? It's it's for everyone. It's for everyone. It it really, I, I can understand why the, why they actually made it a law. But it's something that most responsible businesses have been doing for years. The ABC has been putting on these uh, responsible al alcohol beverage service classes um, for forever, really. Um, so we've always required our, our employees to do that. It's just it's a smart thing to do. Okay, but I mean, if you've taken it, do you have to retake it? Or, it's I mean, supposed to be every three years. At least okay. that, that's what it, that it, what it had been. To renew it, you had, would do it every three years. I, I haven't read that deeply into this law. I just know that everybody has to be taken care well, of. How do they monitor person. that? Do they even, like st send in cops to see if everybody, or do you have to send some to the state? or You have to register through a website with the ABC. First you register as um, whatever your position may be. And then uh, once you register, then you log. They, they have a, a link to different online sources to take the classes. And then you just take an online test. It, it's, it's really pretty painless. How much is it? Yeah, I'm not sure. I am not sure how much it costs. Do you pay for your bartenders to take it, or do they pay for it? Let's not, let's not get into that one yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Um, I just find it to be an unusual law because all of the establishments that I go to, and most of them that I know in San Diego, already require their people to take it anyway. And I think that and a lot of local areas already require that. So why is the state coming on top of that and saying you must do it now? Is there, have you heard anything I, through I your grapevine because, group and all that? I, I think maybe because the state really has no other issues to worry about right now. They're probably bored, sitting, <laughs> on, sitting on their thumbs, and they just needed something to do. Do you hear about uh, Newsom going to Montana? No, I heard about What's his commercials. Tell, tell me that whole thing again. Mike, uh, our uh, executive producer he, of Mark My Words. During COVID, they banned state-funded travel to all the red states for anti-LGBTQ policies. And it's still banned to this day, 22 states, and Newsom's vacationing in one of the states, Montana. Right Montana. Now. Really? <laughs> so he bans yeah. travel, yeah. or travel funded, funded travel, mm -hmm. um, and, and then, then he, he just goes, goes yeah. and vacations there. Well, what about. That yep. guy's such a walking enigma. Well, the, the commercials in Florida, I mean, come on. What's the... Well, you know what he doesn't say in those commercials? You can go from 0% in state income tax to 13% state income tax. 
if you move from Florida to California. Uh, okay, let's cover this, the first issue yeah. real quickly. All right, so you don't know how much it is. It's mandatory by the state. I thought this was a bigger deal than it was, um, mm-hmm. but everybody that I have talked to doesn't seem to mind it terribly much. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of like one of those things you kind of have to do. If you have a car, you got to register it. You got to get insurance. It's one of those things. And our most bar owners or most restaurant owners that have a bar saying, okay, it's just one of these things that we got to do. I think that those of us who operate responsibly have always done it, and it's just, I mean, the state's, okay, you can mandate it, but it's already going on. Uh, I think that those folks that might be less responsible, some of the, the dive your joints around town, will probably do what they've done in the past and not do anything. I, like you said earlier, who's, who's going to really regulate this? The ABC is is busy enough as it is i i i don't know i mean i think uh, abc has bigger issues than going around checking to see if bartenders have taken a class i i, I would agree with you because their yeah. their their whole range encompasses a lot more than I, just a i'll tell you what i had to go to the abc um just a couple months ago to to renew our our license um i did it in person because it, it just that doesn't matter there's one lady in there in the office and she's just pulling her hair out. Really? Yeah. She, one lady? There's one lady working in the office. At the ABC? And she, yeah, and, and nobody answers the phones there. You try to call, you, you end up just, that's why I end up going downtown and just walking in, and there she was, yeah. Is that just because of a staffing shortage, or I people would, don't want to work? Or? I, I would imagine so. I just think everybody... Um, I might go Everybody's apply. short. You should. You know what you should apply for is a bus driver. You'd be a good bus driver. I know that there's a shortage I there. I want to work for the ABC because I'm, uh, I'm coming down to your place. I'm cracking the wood. <laughs> okay. I'm going like, yeah. to be like coming in there with a flash in my badge. Well, so you, see, you talk about that. So the ABC, you know, this, this, new, this new state mandated deal, who's going who's gonna to regulate it? In the meantime, what they just gave 20, 20 veteran police officers their walking papers because they, they're not complying with a, a weekly vaccination. So they're pushing out law enforcement everywhere. I mean, well, they don't have enough law enforcement yeah. to just monitor normal everyday activities. We did a story in Hamul where they put that sex offender mm-hmm. and um, they, if they call 911 after like 7 p.m., nobody shows up because there's nobody there. Yeah. There's nobody there. Yeah, it's the could. sheriff's department, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they can't get anybody to come out. Mm-hmm. So let's, yeah, <laughs> these are all sorts of rabbit holes we could go down. Um, yeah, that's, 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 yeah, they're already stretched, and then they don't want the average citizen to be able to take care of themselves, you know what I mean? Average citizens take care of themselves. Yeah, like, 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 maybe, like, like, like maybe just having a... Uh, something in your home that might deter somebody from from Are you talking about gun laws gun laws yeah yeah interesting stuff <clears throat> um, wh- you know that's really a two okay, we're kind of getting off on other subjects but that's kind of a really a, a interesting deal because like when I was in high school and I and I grew up in a uh, upper middle class uh, upper class neighborhood there in Texas. Everybody in my uh, half of my football team had gun racks with loaded shotguns on, in their trucks or whatever. Nobody shot anybody. But now the issue is you have kind of this mental health crisis going on throughout the country. So folks that are suffering from mental illness now have access to those guns. Mm-hmm. That's the issue I think that's at hand. is more of oh, a mental uh, issue than it is a gun issue. But the mentally challenged folks or the folks that are having mental health issues have access to these guns. And so it's kind of a you know catch-22. Yeah, I think. I, I'm not su- <laughs> super versed in mental health care, but I do, you I'm of the understanding, should, yes, I'm really of the understanding that, it, you know, there are a lot of programs that were, have been taken away over the years that people could probably utilize um, for their mental health. Like what programs? Uh, just things that, that were in place um, years ago. That, that, that's, why the, that's why there's so many people on the streets, because they don't really have anywhere to go. And I, is, now this is getting into unknown territory, but aren't, they, aren't there a lot of people shipping uh, or putting them on trains or whatever and telling them to get off? One-way tickets? Uh-huh. America's finest city? Well, anywhere. It's a, yeah. You know, it's a problem in Dallas, Texas. Yeah. Of all places that I didn't think it would be a problem is Dallas, Texas, because yeah. it's kind of like, you know, 
no. Irvine, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but it is, it's a problem in Dallas. My sister said they're everywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, it's an issue. Yeah. Um, Greg, my partner, was just up in San Francisco. Right. And he says that it actually has gotten a lot, gotten a lot better. Uh, he was he was pleasantly surprised because San, San Francisco, Francisco San Francisco was going you know was the the problem with the with the homeless and the needle programs and all the all the all the things that come along with that and he said it's actually was it was really nice he went really stars, yeah so well you know if what they happened can clean there, that up I mean well if the, the, it started to affect their economy yeah. you know their economy was starting to tank nobody was going up there and that's what's going to have to happen in every city is once it starts impacting the economy and some of the business leaders say hey s clean this up or period mm -hmm. then that's when it's going to start to change um, because it is not it is not uh, you're, you're not being kind to the homeless by leaving them on the street no and you're not protecting those who are um, doing business by leaving them on the street and it's has it, it's been an issue, somewhat of an issue around your area. Oh yeah, not not as bad as it is downtown or in the gas lamp, but around your no, area. No, but there, it's been there, there are plenty issue. of people that are you know are sleeping behind the building or walking through and pulling cigarettes out of ashtrays and yeah, it's 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 sad. But um, what 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 can I do other than you know be compassionate and. But it affects me. I know the people that are visiting us will make comments and it makes them uncomfortable. Well, sure. Hmm. All right, so how about, um, how about your theft? I know there was a lot of theft going on in your area as well. That has seemed to subside somewhat. Yeah, I, Is it because I people hired a security firm that was coming through in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Did they ever get paid? I think they quit doing it because they never got paid for it. Yeah, uh, yeah that was pretty wild. Uh, you know, it was interesting to me when that, then, so f twice we were, um, we were broken into. They, and at one point, or the second visit, they, they took our whole safe, popped open the back door. I mean, th these guys, it, it was amazing how, uh, how easy it was for them, you know, considering well, they, we, had every, we had everything, had, we had the alarm on, we had deadbolts, we had the security door. These guys knew what they were doing. In and out in two minutes with a safe that probably weighed 500 pounds. And they used our dolly to move it out of the building. Well, and that's another thing. They knew where the dolly was. Uh, they, and yeah. they, they did the same thing with the pizza place. They knew where everything was. Yeah. So either these guys knew what was going on, had been in and out of that place several times, yeah. knew where things were. You, you know, it, it kind of, it doesn't, it, it bothers me. They have those security cameras on the stoplights, but they won't access them. They could have, they could have found that vehicle, I'm pretty certain coming through the intersection but when I mentioned it to, to the to the to the cops they said no we can't use those why I don't know I guess it's only if it's like a a, 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 a homicide or a, a major traffic accident that's my understanding I'm, I'm not sure exactly why but I know that there, there are cameras that are on top of those stoplights yeah yeah so yeah what about something like this something a little more positive okay um, snapdragon Snapdragon Stadium. Yeah, going to be a big, big. Uh, you're going to have tailgate parties for this, and we are. Um, are you going to Snapdragon Stadium? Um, not for the first thing. Not for Arizona game. Oh, I didn't know Arizona was playing. Not for Jimmy Buffett. Oh yeah, that's is the concert October. before or after? Oh, that's the concert's October twenty fourth. Arizona's playing uh, San Diego State September third. Do you know Mike McKinnon? Yeah, we met last time. Yeah. You did. Yeah, he's a good man. Yeah. No, so, um, it's 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 amazing that uh, that, that, that all it took was um, I don't know. After all the years waiting for something to happen with that with that site and all and all the things that they said was wrong with it, that within just shoot, what didn't they break ground? It was less it's been less than two years, I think. I would have thought that the Padres leaving would have hurt you more than the Chargers leaving. The Padres leaving was definitely a moment that we took pause and we thought, well, what's, what's, what, what's going to happen? And we got busier. We'd, we'd had enough time to establish ourselves uh, and had a great clientele um, and the neighborhood supported us. The, um, the thing with the Padres games was you'd get busy for an hour or two before the game and then be dead for three hours. 
and then you and then you're busy you. afterwards. But those were some fun times. We, you know, the World Series we had here. Yeah. Uh, and the, as far as Chargers Padres, a few Chargers would come in and hang out, but the Padres it seemed like were in almost every night after a game. Yeah. And they would be, and it's, it's, they were good back then too. Really, really good. Almost as good as they are now. Um, I think that's going to be that's going to be a coup for you though. That Snapdragon oh, Stadium. I mean, I think because they're going to not only have going to have to scoot over. You keep moving, dude. <laughs> Yeah, uh, not that close. <laughs> uh, they're gonna because they're not only gonna have football games. They're gonna have however many football games a year, but they're also gonna have concerts. They do soccer concerts. Uh, they didn't build that to uh, to use it just for football. Yeah, that's you ought to be... make them put an ad up there, a Snapdragon. Just say, hey, come to McGregor's after the game or something. You think? Yeah. I or at least, you know, make an ad that shows everybody you're having a tailgate party or something. Before well, the, 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 the plan is this. Before each event, we're going to have music outside, and uh -huh. we're going to set up a little, uh, a little portable bar so that people walking by from the trolley station will see what's going on. Right. And it'll create some, um, some ambiance. Some buzz. Yeah, some buzz, exactly. Is that the lingo? The buzz. Yep, uh, and then afterwards we'll be ha we'll be doing entertainment as well. It's going to be fun. It's it's going to take us back to the days of, um, you know, running lines, you know, down the sidewalk and having to have you know six or seven security guards on. Really, you think? Yeah, I think it will too. Yeah, I think it'll be great. I'm I, I'm I'm really excited to see. Because really, happen. I mean, if you think about it, between your area. And Snapdragon Stadium, you're pretty much the only game in town. Yeah. They are going to have, um, my understanding, but it's not, I mean, it's a 10-year project. Yeah. So they're getting the stadium up and running. So at least for f the first few years, I don't think we're going to have any competition within the facility itself. Right. Um, and, then that, and then once that happens, that's fine. Competition's good. Bring it on. Yeah. I, I might, you know what, I'm going to, I think I'm going to rent out that, uh, that place that used to be a tanning salon. And open up a bar. Yeah, Mathesis? Just on seven, just on Saturdays. Yeah, or whenever the concerts are going on. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think it's a great, great career move for you, pal. <laughs> I'll serve hamburgers and beer. Yeah, ha just call it hamburgers and beer. Yeah, the home of the Bugus Burger. There you go. Now you're talking. Yeah. Well, we should do that together. We should go into partnership. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, did so, 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 no, no. Did you give Marissa her cake? Uh, I didn't, but I was going to say this real quick. With that, with uh, Snapdragon coming, it's going to be a great opportunity. I mean, right now we, we're we've been doing very well, uh, and we have, we've got a great staff. But we're going to there's going to be some opportunities for some people to come get some jobs, and you know, ten bar, serve drinks. How hard has that been for you? Uh, the, the staff shortages, it doesn't seem like you've been really hurt, hit by that. Other no. places I know have been, and they just always can't I, seem to keep up. I, I, I get it, because the, the, the folks that I, I talk, some, not all of them, but some of the folks that I talk to who are having problems with, with staff, you know, you can tell, it kind of starts at the top. You, you know, if, if people want to work there, they're going to work there. Right. And if you can keep people around, they're going to, that's... Yeah. We have just been fortunate. Uh, we've been doing things the same way for 26 years, and I don't plan on doing it any different. Yeah, I got a couple left in me, I think. A couple more years? A couple more years, yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do after that? Uh, open a bar and retire. Where? <laughs> I'll come be your bartender. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's That's been my, 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 that's kind of my notion. You know, by the time I get a little longer in the tooth to um, just grab a smaller place and let it kind of run itself, be there, but not work as hard. Not work as hard as I work now. Yeah, that's tough, man. I don't. I mean, Louis, if you keep putting in these hours, how are you going to make it? Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's going to be incredibly difficult. I'll tell you what. Uh, that that COVID thing really wore me out. I think it wore everybody out. It was. It was. Um, it was something else, really. I. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of glad that's over. <laughs> I've been hearing word, though, that they're talking about maybe asking people to start masking inside again. Why? Because of these... That's not going to fly. Uh, I, I just uh, don't think that's going to fly. I don't think the American people would put up with it. 
I really don't. I mean, there. I mean, there's people still today that I see walking around with a mask on. So never say never. But I just think, you know, you know, everything's going to remain calm until the midterm elections, and then after the midterm elections, everything's going to hit the fan again. You know, um, and you know they're going to give money to people. They're going to give them the you know the gas rebate checks and everything else, and they're going to. You think that's going to sway people? I don't know. I just don't understand how anybody can look at the current state of California right now and, and continue to vote in the way that they're voting. It or, just drives me insane. Or even even say that they're happy with the way things are going. I mean, if you look at Sandag and what they're doing, if you look at the money, if money fixed problems, we should be the greatest state in America. Yeah. And we're the worst state in America. That's true. Um, the only good thing about California is the weather. I mean, the the government is sucks. But speaking of the, the um, doing business right now, it, it's it, it's nice to be doing business, but it's become it's almost financially doesn't make sense to go into business the way that the price. I mean, the gas prices are causing causing. Um, uh, increases in, in all of our products. I just had an ice machine go down, and because of the because of the trouble getting things into the United States, they're saying they can't. They don't even have the machine that's similar to mine in the United States right now. Could be months. Um, they want to raise the minimum wage again. What well, they think they're talking eighteen dollars an hour. Oh, I mean, it's it. Um, it's like I said. It's nice to be in business, but it's almost like they don't want you to be in business. Well, and it's almost like with like, I had a friend of mine that is the president of a major uh, restaurant chain, and he will not build west of Arizona because he just can't afford it. The building restrictions, the timetable that it takes, all the codes that they have to go by out here, he just can't do it. And he won't build, now if you go to Dallas, Texas, and I, I use this as an example because my folks live there and I'm from there, you can drive down, let's just say you drive down Friars Avenue. There would be restaurant, 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 restaurant. there's a restaurant next restaurant door to Row. a restaurant. Yeah, I mean, it's like mm -hmm. that everywhere, though, in Dallas. Yeah. There's restaurants all over the place. And most of them are fairly successful. Yeah. Um, but you can't do that here, you know, um, just because of the building codes and, and the restrictions. And oh, it takes forever. What about, what about Frank's place next door to McGregor's? And how long has they been wanting to open? Two years. Two they, they, years. They're, they're all done. They're still waiting for, for city stuff. They're ready to open. We, you know, uh, my uh, Sal down. You know, they 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 got fined forty thousand dollars for that thing that the, they have on their patio, the, and they have to take it down. Um, have they taken it down? Uh, they have X amount of days but to take it down. They, they still, even if they take it down, they still have to pay the forty thousand dollars. See, I'm not sure yeah. about that. Um, I know they have to pay something. Yeah. But it's just, it's it's just the the, the people running this city have got to be moronic. I mean, it really is the stupidest run study. Yeah. I don't know. There's, 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 yeah. There's a lot of things that go into that, uh, that equation. Well, I mean, I mean, you got, you got the unions, okay, mm -hmm. and and you've got the union reps and all this stuff um, that are pushing a lot of these agendas mm -hmm. here in the city, um, and then you got, you know. Your, your Nathan Fletchers of the world who don't give a damn about you or don't give a damn about the economy and don't give a damn. It's a, it's a political move. It's a career move for them. And all they're doing is moving up the corporate ladder. You know? And anything that the Democratic Party says to do, he's going to do. Because that's how he moves up. And, um, and they, I mean, these, what, these, these politicians, what, that, so many of them are in business for themselves, not for you. I hope people understand that. And it, it goes yeah. both ways. Well, what did I say the last time I was here? You, you have to participate. You have to pay attention. You have to see what's going on around you and make and make, make the decision that's best best for you and the country, or, or the, even the city. It all starts. You should start at your city level, and then you work work up. But yeah, it, it's craziness. Um, what about um, what about the U.S. giving China fifty million barrels of gas? Did you hear about I haven't that? heard that. We gave China 50 million, or we sold it to them. Who knows what we did? Middle of a gas crisis, evidently, right? Gas prices are through the ceiling. 50 million barrels. All right, so let's look this up. 
Um, so the U.S. gave China fifty million barrels of gas, oil, oil, oil. gas. So this was uh, March 1st, 2022. U.S. and 30 countries commit to release 60 million barrels of oil from strategic reserves to stabilize global energy markets. <clears throat> On the surface, that looks somewhat good um, because, you know, over in Europe, they're having an energy mm -hmm. crisis like none other. Um, but, I mean, we got to take care of I mean, why did he close I just, down I just the, heard that today. Why did he close down the pipeline, though? Okay, this is, uh, okay, Biden, uh, Joe Biden has allowed 5 million barrels oh, of oil from U.S. national supply to be shipped abroad after claiming they'd be released to help lower soaring gas prices. So it was oil that was supposed to be utilized here and it was shipped, shipped away. Why did he shut down the pipeline from Canada? I mean, open it back up again. I just don't understand that. It's the Green New Deal, buddy. I mean, is this the most, and you know, maybe we're talking on the surface here and we haven't done a deep dive on this stuff, but my God, it is, the gas prices are coming down and watch, they're going to come down right up until the midterms. But, but how much are they going to come down? Well, they've gotten down to three ninety nine in Texas. Well, it's, it's five five ninety nine here. I know. It was six twenty nine yesterday when I filled up. Yeah. I don't know. It's stuff like that that make it difficult. You know, on the surface, it just seems like oh, gas is it costs costs. It's expensive, but it affects everything. You know what else is, makes it difficult? So we've got the the, the fuel shortage that is um, driving up prices for those of us that run restaurants and bars. But um, in the last year, there's been uh, food processing plants that have have been that have burned or blown up um, on purpose I don't know but a lot of I there have been a lot of food processing plants across the country that are, are unable to work because they uh, they got blown up they or blown up or burned down do you think it's to get the insurance money <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know I mean, either. A lot of people do that, you know. I, I don't know, man. But it's it's awful strange. But that so that's another thing that we're. I mean, uh, keeping keeping product consistent um, on, is is a battle every week. You know, it's it's a silly, it might be a silly example, but like French fries, I get different French fries every week because the, the the suppliers just shopping around and they're just getting whatever they can get. Right. I went to, I went stopped at a place the other day. It was a rally burger. What do they serve there? They serve burgers and french fries. They didn't have any french fries. You're kidding. Yeah, because they couldn't get them. Really? Yeah, and, and then something uh, like like liquor. They're, we're buying different size packages. Traditionally in a, in a, in a bar, use a liter bottle. Um, and they're out of liter bottles of a lot of different things. Um, so you get a you get a 750 bottle, which is one, something you buy in a grocery store, or you get the the handle um, because that's all they have, or they don't even have it because they can't get it. Right. Yeah. It's um. It's been interesting. So you know, if you throw all those things together, you throw in um, you throw in minimum wage, you throw in your, your your costs are rising. I used to run. I was running a 28 percent food cost prior to COVID. Right now, my food cost is 42%. God dang, really? <laughs> and then you throw in the labor on top of that, and it's um, it's hard to make a buck. Do you ever see it coming back down? Do, uh, I don't know, man. It, 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 this is just the beginning. If, if in fact, all of those, those refineries and processing plants Truly, it, it's somebody said the other day it was it was 96 processing plants across the country that that were offline or or weren't, weren't might never ever come back. That's just the beginning. It, it, I think it might get worse. Do you uh, do you have any friends that are out of state that are running restaurants and are there problems as severe as ours are here? I don't. 
I you know, know, it really is. I tell you, you will get back to this mental health thing from a personal standpoint. You live in this and hear about it and, 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 and have to deal with it and everything else from a day in and day out basis. It, it, it affects you mentally mm -hmm. from a depression standpoint. You know, and I just don't see people having to go through the things that we're having to go through here in California on a day-to-day -day basis. Food costs going from 28% to 42%, you know? I mean, yeah, yeah. And uh, the cost of living isn't getting any better. Oh, God. I mean, oh. It, it's... Yeah, I'll tell you what, I grew up here, I've been here, and I never thought I would even consider leaving a few years back, I, I kind of said to myself, you know, once once my daughters are are grown and and are able to take care of themselves, which is, I mean, it's coming up r real you got quick. Yeah, a couple of years. Yeah, um, I, I might just pick it up and go. Where are you going to go? You know where we need to go? <laughs> Big Bend. Big Bend. Uh, what's going on there? It's just you know, I think there's some growth potential there. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I, I was even thinking of um, going down south. Oh, going down to Cabo? No, not Cabo necessarily. Just an area down there? Yeah, a, a, little, a little cantina on the beach. <laughs> Get a house down there pretty inexpensive. Yeah, you could. Yeah. I'd do it. Yeah. I gotta save up some money though. Uh, well, you're doing better. <laughs> <laughs> how, how are you peeing? Are you peeing okay these days? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing fine. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about uh, Howard Stern asking Dan Rather just a minute ago that he, that he was telling him that it was hard for him to pee. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Somebody told me today that when Don Imus went to rehab, when he got back from rehab, mm -hmm. Howard Stern said he put cases stoli. <laughs> Are you shitting me? Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> What a jerk. <laughs> but that was shock jocks back yeah, then, yeah, yeah. man. They just messed with each other. I thought they did. You ever met Stern? Uh, no, uh, but I've had a bunch of friends that have been on his show. He used to love the girls over at Fox News Channel. Yeah. And um, so he, a friend of mine used to co-host Fox and Friends up there, and so she went on his show a couple of times. Yeah. They loved her, and he loved her. Yeah. And, um, so she's been on it, and uh, but you know he is really he is he has gone a 180 from what he used to be. I mm -hmm. mean he used to be this, you know, almost it was it was almost it was hard to watch towards the end because I think everybody kind of started mm -hmm. growing up, you know, a little bit. Yeah. and kind of got seared of that. I I, I had to stop listening to him at some point. I think I probably just, yeah, I matured enough to where it wasn't all that funny anymore. Yeah. It, um, but now he's just a straight almost yeah. straight interview show. Yeah. He doesn't really do any of that stuff. Except that's Dan Rather how he's peeing. <laughs> Ask <laughs> if he's peeing okay. <laughs> so uh, is your uh, is your personal life okay? Yeah, it's fine. How about you? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Hey, uh, we got our 26 year anniversary coming up. Oh, and I didn't you tell just you. did the 25th. We just, yeah, it's, it means it's already a year. Uh, and I don't know if I told you the um, the summer solstice, Allied Gardens, yeah, little league deal. We raised uh, twenty five hundred dollars for scholarships. I thought it was three thousand. What'd you do with the other five hundred? I I never said three thousand. <laughs> I said twenty five. Well, no, that's great. That's yeah, great. Yeah. So uh, it goes directly to Allied Gardens. It goes. There's a scholarship. I think that uh, the scholarships are hundred and hundred fifty bucks each. So that'll take care of a few kids. Yeah. That's a that's a good feeling, man. Yeah, twenty five kids. I think roughly. that I, I think that the, um, about twenty kids. Yeah, I think that the uh, community around us should be real proud of themselves because when you say a hundred uh, scholarships, is that a scholarship for the, a kid for the, for for the, the summer to, to play play a season? Yeah, oh, okay. it gets them their uniform oh, and their, their, uh, their 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 dues and uh, and and equipment. You know, the last time you were on KUSI, had you said something like that, as opposed to, I've been trying to get him laid all morning. He was wearing a lay, and he, and so, of course, everybody starts calling in. Yeah. Who's going to pay the FCC fine? Yeah, well, I apologize. No, I don't think I, you need to apologize. Yeah. I always and enjoy I talking to uh, you. Yeah, yeah, likewise. I was going to ask we, you we've some, but I, I think about I'll... barrels of oil. We've <laughs> talked about the new bartending. What else have we talked about? 
We've talked about uh, what's going on here in the state compared to other states and, and the mental health, health aspect of it. It's been a pretty uh, broad, uh, broad subject. I, I enjoy, I, see, Rogan has a couple of guys that he just brings on and they just shoot the shit every now and then. Yeah. And I would like to do that. Oh, well, we just did. I, I mean, know. We are. <laughs> Well, I know, but I think it's I think it's a it's good to to have these type of conversations. Okay, I got an idea. What? Don't come by and see me for about three or four days, and then we'll just have a dynamic conversation. Here are oh in, no yeah have a great we'll have a dynamic conversation. Well, I live right by there. It's so easy to go up there. I mean, it's I, it's like a little walk. I, I, I'm just I'm just throwing out a hint, maybe just you know. But I like going up there. I like seeing Christy and Abby. And all the staff there is very yeah. kind towards me. And Christy just, um, what is it, f 15 years? No, no, 10 years. 10 years sitting with us now. Well, you should have given her a cake. <laughs> I, I, gave, I took care of her. She's fine, thank you. She's fine. Everybody's fine. That's why they're still there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ian Lineken. Lineken. Uh, we uh, appreciate you coming on. Come back. Whenever you like. If you have something you want to talk about, please come back. Right. I will. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate and, it. all uh, you guys. you want to mention your restaurant one more time? Uh, McGregor's, um, McGregor's Ale House. This will be on Mission, YouTube. Mission Valley. Oh, and you need to get the, uh, you need to get, can I text you this? Yes, please. This is, uh, where is that thing, Mike? The, mm. uh, the flow code. Oh, here it is right here. So here's the flow. QR code. I uh, can't see it. I'll uh, text this to you. I can edit it in at that point. Oh, yeah. Okay. So here, Mike is going to edit in the flow code now. So you just you scan this. Can you scan it with just an iPhone or do you, can it be like an Android? Anything. Okay. You scan this and that will take you right to our platform, Spotify, YouTube, whatever, and you can listen to it in your car. Or where Is that why it's the fastest growing podcast? Because you've got all these growing, fancy things. Fastest growing podcast in America. In America? Yeah. Really? Where, where did you get those numbers? That's not important. Is that like the 3,000? <laughs> <laughs> Ian, come back anytime you want. All right, Mark. I've I appreciate been, it, bud. I've enjoyed good it. Good to see you. It's always good to uh, see you. When is this going to be up, Mike? 45 minutes. 45 minutes. You're going to be broadcast all over the world. All over the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're getting pumping That's in. That's true. Huh? It's worldwide. It is yeah, worldwide. It's World Wide Web. Mm -hmm. Do I hit stop? That would be correct. Okay. We'll see you next time. We got to no, get. Not pause. Not pause. Oh, stop recording. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you next time on KOSI's Mark My Words.